Hi everyone, it's Alexis. I hope you are all doing well today. When we came out with chapter three, we kind of, because it spans quite a few seasons, we go from summer to fall to winter within chapter three's releases, I wanted to speak to you about how you can make some of those dyes last through all those different seasons. So today I'm going to be speaking specifically about some of our floral dyes, um, one in particular called Floral Abundance and another one called the Layered Winter Flower. Now these two dye sets, kind of one lends itself to everyday use, but the other one is the Layered Winter Flower. So its name in and of itself doesn't exactly make you think that you can use it beyond the winter months, but I'm here to tell you you can, and I've got lots of examples. Um, one thing that I really love finding about florals, but also just dyes in general, is a way to increase their longevity. So finding ways for everyone to be able to use them year-round, and that's what I've done today. I have taken the florals and I've turned them into Four Seasons cards, meaning I have done a card for every dye that is for different seasons throughout the year. So I'll be able to show you some color ways that you can choose, ways that you can make something appear more um, spring-like versus winter. And I'm gonna do it with two different dyes. And I've got examples for both of those dyes. But I think realistically, any floral set, you can do this. Four Seasons cards are really just down to your cardstock choices um, and different layouts and things like that. So I'm going to switch to an overhead camera and I'm going to walk you through some really fun ways to take your dies from chapter three and turn them into everyday dies for all year round. Okay, so in front of me I have two of the die sets I'm going to be working with today. This first one is called The Layered Winter Flower by Lisa Jones. And then the second one over here is Floral Abundance. Now these are both floral based dies that come with their own flowers and foliage. Um, this one in particular is a layered kind of each layer comes up and has um, embossing lines that you can follow so that you know where each layer below and above is supposed to line up. And then the Floral Abundance die set, what I love about this one is that the leaf and the foliage shapes all really lend themselves to different seasons throughout the year. So you've got something that is a little bit more geared towards fall right here. You've got some holly leaves here. You've got some berry sprigs for spring and then some nice stuff for um for summer, I couldn't think of the fourth season there for a second. Um, and then you've got a few florals in there just to kind of be able to change it out year round. Now both of them come with quite a few dyes and I wanted to show you what that looks like for each one. So as I was saying with the layered flower, you get these three main pieces and each one has an embossed feature in it so that you know where to lay in the piece that you're cutting for above. So these three layer up with these two pieces being the flower center at the very top. It's the same thing with the leaves, they layer up. So you've got a large one and a small one, and then you've got this kind of leafy sprig right here, also layers up. And then you've got the berries, and those also layer. So this one's a really great one if you want to create dimension. Um, in between layers, you can do different colors. You can add different textures if you wanted to do them out of all opulent cardstocks. Um, it's a really fun, versatile set in that you can create really customizable uh, flower, sh uh, not flower shapes, but flower colors. Then you've got floral abundance, and as you can see, it is an abundance of leaves and flowers and berries. Um, and I just, this it might be one of my favorite sets we've ever come out with because it has such different shapes. Um, they look different from one another, which is nice because then I've got a ton of different ways that I can use this. And I like that they're not too big and not too small, so it makes your cards look really full. Um, I wanted to point out one additional set, and I also wanted to pull up, before I do that, I wanted to show you kind of the size, because sometimes it's hard to see how that looks in person. So I've got, um, I've got a couple here where I've got them already die cut out of, this one's out of our festive cardstock. So you can see kind of, these are a pretty decent size leaf shape, like they're the size of my pinky, which I've got small hands, but <laughs> they're pretty, still a decent size. So you get a really nice 
focal point with these and you can create a lot of different looks but what I love about these leaves is that they really are interchangeable with other die sets which is what I kind of did across my cards today. When I did the layered flower which looks like this once it's all layered up, this one um, as you can see tonally you can do three different colors to create that depth. Um, you could also watercolor these or hand paint them to really create like a realistic floral if you wanted to but you can also create that out of cardstock and then just add inking with your different um, distress inks. So these are two that I've decided to mix together today. Not because they look the same, they really don't, but I wanted to show you how you can take two different die sets and mix them together with ease. So I've also included the chapter three embossing folder called Shells. And this one is cut out of, I believe this is the, yeah, this is the rose gold uh, texture roll, which is beautiful for 3D embossing because you get all that depth and dimension. Um, 3D embossing looks really beautiful on opulent cardstocks and texture rolls, but today I've used it just on white cardstock and then I've inked on the backgrounds to show you how you can change the background color to also get the season that you're looking for. There is one more die set I want to show you real quick where I think it's possible to use it year round even though it has a very summer spring vibe to it. And that one, let me grab it real quick, is called Floral Garden. It's by Jess Scott. Um, this one, I think you could do some really cute things with this. Because the flowers, you can change out the colors, but also the birdhouse and the water jugs and the plants, you could change all of those to fall, spring, summer, winter colors. And you could even add a little snow on top with our texture um, dimensional paste or add some really pretty like snow effects with our new glitters. Um, all of this stuff is really, I think people see these shapes and my whole goal is to make you see what's possible with them. So while everyone might traditionally look at that and see just spring and summer, I look at it and I see a fall birdhouse, a Christmas birdhouse covered in snow. I see this one with different flowers coming out of it for the different times of year that you might be growing in your gardens. So it's definitely not just geared towards what people see it as traditionally as summer. So I want to kind of get into some of the different projects. I'm going to start with spring and what I did with die sets. And then I do have a little make for you, but I want to talk through um, what I went with for each season before I go in and show you something totally different. So the first thing is spring, like I said, and I've got two different cards here. One, my focal point is that you will see I've made this exact same card for every single season, both of them, I've made the exact same card for each season and I've just changed the colors. And that's what I want, I kind of kept it kind of simple just so that you can see that the only thing that makes it feel like it's that season is the cardstock colors. So I did one that's a little bit more uh, precise and then I did one that feels a little more organic. <laughs> and on this one I used just floral abundance and some of our not traditional, our assorted cardstock. Now I did go into the assorted cardstock colors and I added in different inks just to give um, some depth and to each of the flowers, make them stand out a little bit more. So I've done that with um, a lot of our colors from the assorted range and I did that also with this one with the layered flower. Now I wanted to point out in the layered flower, I did each layer in the same cardstock color because I just wanted something simple and easy to put together, but then the greenery is not from the layered winter flower set, it's actually from the floral abundance set. And then I've kept a very simple white background with the shells um, embossing folder, because I wanna show you that those embossing folders, just even in white, are so stunning by themselves, and they don't detract from what you've got going on in the foreground, and they're just a really nice texture in the background to make it all kind of feel put together. So that's spring, very light pastel colors, um, colors that you would traditionally find in the springtime. And then I wanted to show you, when I think of summer, I think of bright, bold colors, very punchy type of um, way to do things. I'm gonna just place that off to the side and bring in my next one. So the next one is summer. And I went with very bold colors, but as you can see, I literally did the same layout and just by changing out my cardstock colors, I get a completely different look and feel. 
So on this one, I did an assortment again of our um, assorted cardstock, but I used the bold colors instead of the pastel colors. And again, I went in with some distress inks just to give some of the, the flower petals a little bit more depth by creating shadows. Um, and then on the layered winter flower one, I was able to go in with this one and what I did with the shells, I just I did this color originally and I didn't like how the flowers looked on it. So this was a, a great way for me to learn that mistakes are perfect sometimes because what I ended up doing was flipping it over and using the deboss side, which I thought was really cool. And I added some shaded lilac on there because I knew I was going to have my lavender dust flower. So I wanted to kind of pull that together. And so I've used assorted cardstock here, but then I pulled in our festive cardstock range with the greenery. So again, my greenery is from Floral Abundance, but my flower is from the Layered Winter Flower. So just showing you that that die sets, they do really mix well together and you can get different looks just by changing out the background and by changing out the leaves. So that's summertime. Now let's move into fall, and I have to tell you, fall's my favorite season of the year. Not necessarily the colors, but I just love, like, oh, I love being cold, which people think I'm crazy being from California. They think I love summertime, but I actually don't. <laughs> I love the colors and stuff in summertime, but not the heat. So fall is my jam. Um, and this time with fall, we went with, like, very traditional colors. Again, using the exact same layout as I've used with the other ones and I just changed out my colors. Now this one is a mixture of a couple of different um, cardstock sets. I've got assorted cardstock in there, I've got the botanical cardstock range, and I think I even pulled in a little bit from the festive as well. But I also wanted to point out that this card base is actually part of our cards and envelopes line. So this is um, Fir Tree, which is part of our festive range. So that is going to be coming out soon if it hasn't already. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head if it's out, but it will be here soon. It's a 10 pack of cardstock, or not cardstock, but cards and envelopes. And um, it, it is available because I already did another live on it. I had to remember that for myself. Um, but you get 10 packs. So I thought great time to send Thanksgiving cards if you're in the US or Canada um, but if you're someone that just likes to send cards year-round another great option if you're sending out a bulk um, a bulk set for the fall so then on this one again I used only floral abundance on this one but on this one I mixed the two so with the background I took um, the embossed shells panel and I use vintage photo on top of it to give it kind of more of a rustic brown hue. And then I picked out um, three different colors that tonally feel more fall to me. So this is Mango Tango from Assorted. Um, this is a really beautiful, you can't, you can't really tell, but it's like almost like a rust, rusty red color um, from our botanical cardstock pack. These ones are from our festive cardstock pack. They're the sage. Color. And then we've got a really nice cream from our neutral cardstock pack. So again, just changing out the colors, get a completely different feel from the spring and summer ones. And then the last one is obviously winter. And traditionally, I think a lot of people think of winter and they think Christmas, but if you don't celebrate Christmas, sometimes you just want to do something like very bright and cheery, um, especially at the end of the year when you're celebrating. So I like to use non-traditional color palettes for the holidays, and our festive pack, uh, cardstock pack, really offers a lot for that. So this particular one, I did the same layout as the other is with the floral abundance, but I dove into our festive cardstock pack with this one. So all of the colors you see on this card, except for this one right here, which is our cherry blossom from the assorted pack. Um, I really like mixing pinks and reds and aquas. Um, and what's nice is on this one, I did go a bit more traditional and I used greens and reds. I did add a pink in there just to create like a little color variation. But on the background of this one, I used evergreen bow for um, the shells. And then I also went back in with a gold metallic pen and wanted to add a little something to make these particular foliage leaves pop off that background instead of kind of blending into it or feeling awkward. So I went and added some little gold detailing with um, gold paint pen on all of these pieces before I glued them down. 
So I'm going to lay these out real quick so you can see how they look in each of their seasons, which this was a lot of fun to do. Um, I definitely love flowers. Me and Jess are the flower queens. Anytime we get a chance to work with them, we are on board. But I definitely wanted the chance to show you just how versatile you can make these two die sets. So I think I got them all in frame. <laughs> um, but all it is is just changing out your cardstock colors. You can maintain the same layouts. Um, it's really beautiful to kind of play around with whatever cardstock you have available, but it's really simple with just three different things. You could even just stick to one die set if you wanted to and just change out the colors. You can go with a plain background if you don't want to do embossing. If you want to do embossing, you can change out the embossing effects. I did want to show you one additional way that you could use the embossing folders. So I this is another fall one I did with completely different colors again, um, but instead of inking or leaving the background plain, what I did is I ran a clear embossing ink pad across the top of that folder when it was in, um, embossed already. And then I went back over it with our gold uh, embossing powder and it added a really cool enamel effect. So there's different ways you can um, use these. You can also use our new luster waxes on the background. You could also go over these lightly with some of our 3D adhesive and then apply foil to them. There's a lot of different ways you can change out the background on that. Okay, let me just get these out of the way real quick. I did want to show you two additional ways I use the Floral Abundance in both a festive and an everyday. So Jen Lawn's Bell Jar Card Fold Along um, is a really cute little one that has coming out. Now traditionally this set is more geared towards like a village scene for Christmas or winter. But I saw it and I just thought of like a bell jar and how people do florals inside. So I took the Floral Abundance die set and I created like just a fun little mini trees inside with flowers. Um, I still kind of want to play with this a little bit more because I think this particular die shape you can actually do a lot with. Um, I can see like little butterflies going around. So this shape, while it is a bell jar um, for Christmas with the, the dies that it comes with, the base shape of the bell jar you can use with floral abundance or any of these to kind of create a really cool glass dome um, foliage scene. And then I also have this folio journal from Eileen Hull, which I have cut out of um, map board and put into this fun little journal. But then I decorated the cover using the Floral Abundance set, and I did it mostly in traditional Christmas colors. Um, threw in a couple like mint julep and peppermint colors here as well to break up the, the reds but you can create really beautiful wreath effects um, for home decor or journals or um, any even like little decorations around the holidays. So Floral Abundance has a lot of different ways that you can use it, scrapbooking, card making, journaling, um, but I do want to show you now a little, a little make I have prepared. So give me one second, let me get some of my pieces ready. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to emboss my back panel. So I'm going to bring in my fold away machine real quick. So with 3D adhesive, 3D embossing, um, you're going to work off the whatever platform you're going to follow the instructions for 3D textured impressions. So right this I know I only need this platform and one cutting pad. I am going to take my paper and I've got um, a water spritzer and I'm going to wet both sides of my paper real quick off to the side. You want to make sure that you're really getting that paper pretty, not like soaking wet, but you definitely want it to um, break the fibers open because if you don't add enough water, it will tear the paper. So if you get it just a little wet before you run it through the machine, what it does is it allows that folder, that paper to have more give into the 
different layers and depths of the 3D embossing holder. Now with 3D, we recommend running it through at least, at bare minimum, twice, but I usually say 3D three times. And look how beautiful that is. I think it's one of my favorite folders. And we've, our designers that design these 3D um, folders spend so much time developing these designs and I just don't know how they do it. I've tried to understand it. <laughs> it's, it's honestly way over my head, but they create these really beautiful, stunning effects. So I'm going to set that aside to dry on the, um, while I get some of my other pieces together. So I wanted to create a fun kind of tone on tone winter card. So I have a few pieces I've already die cut and embellished on the side and I'm just grabbing them. Um, I took from the layered winter flower, I took the main three main pieces for layering the flower and I've done them out of some bluebell cardstock from our assorted cardstock pack. And one thing I did want to mention, and I haven't mentioned it yet, when you're doing things like this where you've got to layer up pieces, your best friend is going to be adhesive sheets. I put every single one of those cards together with adhesive sheets. Um, it made the mess. You can do it with glue too, but I always find my too much glue and then it kind of comes sopping out the side. So adhesive sheets are great for when you're doing these. Then I've cut a bunch of foliage from the Arctic Sky and Bluebell cardstock from the Floral Abundance die set. And what I wanted to do in the center of this was actually take one of the flowers from Floral Abundance and cover it in our gold luster wax and put that in the center of the flower just to change it up a little bit. So what I've done on each of these was with, um, you can do it with your finger. I actually used a Q-tip um, or a cotton swab and I took some of our gold luster wax which is very creamy and goes on so smooth. It's a very buildable um, luster wax and it smells heavenly. It's got orange oil in it. So it smells so nice and it's beeswax based. So it doesn't have a lot of like those chemically smells everyone's used to. But what I did is I wanted to add that gold effect to these smaller pieces, which I think is always a nice way to just make something stand out. And so I've done all the berries in that gold luster wax. And then I went around the two um, leaf shapes with some gold and then I went in and these had embossing lines on them so I took a white gel pen and I brought out that white emboss just to make it stand out a little bit better. So I cut all these pieces and I'm going to add them um, onto here. Now before I do, I do want to add a little bit more um, of this and so I'm going to take the trying to find a piece of paper off to the side real quick. It's always good when you're using in uh, the luster wax. You always kind of want to have like a scrap piece of paper off to the side. It's very similar if you're used to using distress inks. You don't want to go straight from the ink pad to whatever you're going to ink because then you get a really harsh um, line. So it's the same thing with luster wax. That's why we say it's very buildable because what I want to do is kind of take some of the excess off of my finger on here and then I can control how much and where I'm adding it. So I'm just going to add a little bit here and there just to make my flower pop and feel like it blends in with everything else that I've got there. Now with getting that off your fingers, soap and water will take it off for the most part, but I have actually found that um, antibacterial takes it off the best. So hand sanitizer. Whenever you're working with luster wax, have hand sanitizer right next to you. You just put a little on your finger, mesh it in, and then it wipes right off. Um, it does come off with soap and water. I feel like it just takes a little bit longer than just getting it right off. Because you don't want to get it on the rest of your pretty project. Okay, so I'm going to let those kind of dry, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of start, what I like to do is when I'm building cards, that's what I call it, um, I want to add a little bit of a background to this, so I'm going to take some tumbled glass, distress ink, 
I'm using our multi-tool with the blending tool head. I'm going to bring in the craft mat real quick so I don't get my background dirty. And I'm just going to lightly add some of this tumbled glass to the background of my shell. That is a lot. That does not look like tumble glass. <laughs> I think this might be labeled wrong. Yep, that's broken china. <laughs> okay, well, this might totally not look okay, but tumble glass is a little bit lighter in, um, in color, so I'm just going to try to do this in a very light hand. That's my fault. I should have double-checked that before I brought it on. So just light-handed, I'm going to get a lighter blue on here. I'm going to see how my blue belt looks with this because this might not be what I'm going for. Yeah, I'm not really liking that. So you know what? I'm going to flip it over. I, I, I'm, I'm picky about what my colors look like. So I'd rather have a white background than one that clashes. And to me, those just kind of clash. This is a perfect opportunity to show you how beautiful this design looks on the deboss side because that deboss is just as pretty as the emboss side. So instead of adding ink, we're going to keep it a nice, pretty background color. And I'm going to lay out all my pieces. So I always start with my flower first. And then I kind of tuck... Um, I tuck things where I want them to go. So since there's a lot of bluebell right there, I'm gonna, I don't want to put it all in one spot, so I'm gonna start moving the other ones around to kind of break up that bluebell color. This one up a little bit more. And I want to break up that, so I'm going to actually use. I think I'm going to put this one down here. That one up. So it's kind of working a, a triangle effect, um, so I can have it going up the the card. And then it feels like it flows a little bit better. There it is. So now what I'll do is I'll just start gluing those down into place where I like them. And I always try to leave room when I'm doing a card like this. I'll leave room so I can put like a sentiment up there later. Um, right now I'm just showing you kind of layout and color and how you can change it up and how you can use these all together. So I'm just going to use some express glue to put all of these pieces down. Um, but if I wanted to, I could also... Um, I could also put adhesive sheets on the back of these and had them lay down. And it actually would lay down better on the deboss side than on the emboss side because um, the emboss side obviously doesn't, everything won't lay flat, whereas on the deboss side there's more for it to hold on to. Okay. don't need a lot, so I'm just going to put a little bit on it, and I'm going to put this right into the middle, which I think adds such a nice little effect. Now, for the flower, I would, I always like for my flowers to have a little bit more um, kind of 3D dimension to them, so I'm actually going to add a little bit of foam tape behind my layered flower.
and I actually find that this helps when you're layering these things down in place too. So I'm going to add glue to the bottom of these berry leaves because I'm not going to see that glue. It's going to be hidden by the flower so you can, it doesn't matter if it seeps out just a little bit. And then I put a little bit on the back side of the berries as well. Just to hold everything into place. You could also paper sculpt these um, with our paper sculpting kit if you wanted the leaves to stand out and feel more realistic. But I know a lot of people, if they're sending cards, they don't want them to be too thick because then they're harder to go through the mail. And I'm not too worried about the glue on this back, this bottom side, because it's going to be covered by my flower, so that's why I'm being a little bit messy with it. It's all going to be covered up anyway. So then I'm going to just lay down my main flower. And then you can stamp a sentiment, print a sentiment. You could, um, there's essential type from this chapter release as well that makes, um, it's a really nice, simple topography. So, or typography, not topography, <laughs> typography, um, that you can add, just want to make sure I'm doing this in a way that looks pretty, um, that you can add to do a, a nice little sentiment on it. But here's my little tone on tone, floral abundance layered winter flower with the shells deboss side because we were not having this this color with this color. <laughs> I thought it was a lighter color. It looked so pretty with that. Um, so that's a lot of what you can do. You can turn them into four seasons like I showed you. You can also turn it into every day like this one. Um, you can also do floral abundance just as an everyday kind of set like this one. But I had a lot of fun showing you how you can just make that these die sets every day just by changing out the colors on them. Um, it's a lot of fun to just have a play around. Don't feel a lot of pressure to, to make it perfect every time. I played with a lot of different colors before I found the colors that I was happy with and I still actually find areas where I could improve them to make them feel a little bit more in line with that season as well. So just have a play with what you've got, um, and these are available now. They're part of the Chapter 3 release, and I, I'm just going to flip my camera back up real quick. Okay, so that is our four seasons all in a nutshell um, using the Floral Abundance and the Layered Winter Flower. I know I've said that a million times, but really don't want you to forget which die sets I was using. <laughs> so have a play with those at home. I would love to see what you do with them and the different colorways and the different making techniques that you do with them. So if you do do that and you want to share it on your social media, be sure to tag us at Sizzix and also use the hashtag MyMakingStory so that I can see what else you're making with it. I hope you have enjoyed this and I hope it gave you lots of ideas to see what you could do with uh, those two die sets in particular throughout the rest of the year and into next year if you wanted. And um, yeah, happy making. I'll see you soon. Thanks so much.